So there you have it, Kim Potter uh, being put into handcuffs and ushered out of the courtroom, found guilty on all charges. The sentencing date now February 18th uh, after they had to go through several different dates. We're going to be getting some legal analysis uh, here on the stream to break down what comes next for Kim Potter. But I do want to take you to a couple other live looks that we have outside of the courtroom right now. This is live as community members have gathered together uh, and we actually capture the moments that the verdict was read. I'm going to play that out for you in full. <laughs> So the chants uh, ringing loud outside of the Hennepin County Courthouse, justice for Dante Wright, right before the holidays. And we have, again, taking you back out live to the courthouse. Many of those community leaders are going to be holding a press conference along with the Attorney General, uh, Keith Ellison, out in Minnesota. We'll be bringing you all of these live events. But we do have uh, some live legal analysis that we want to bring to you as well. I want to bring in... Uh, ben Taylor, thank you so much for sticking around with us, Ben. So we have the verdict coming down, both counts guilty for Kim Potter. Yes, I mean, we have a verdict right before the holidays, and this verdict was the first count, the reckless count, which is the maximum of 15 years that Kim Potter is facing. The second count was the negligence count, which is a maximum of 10 years that she's facing. So you saw that. The jury decided all 12 had to be unanimous. All 12 said guilty on both counts. So the next steps will be sentencing. You heard the attorneys talking about a, a sentencing date. The reason why they're pushing it off until February, because they have to prepare. The prosecutor is going to ask for the maximum amount of time, 15 years or even try to maybe even get more than 15 years that they, they might try to. The defense attorney, you heard him argue that Kim Potter should be released, um, should be released prior to sentencing and wait until sentencing happens. And the defense attorney is going to ask for the least amount of time. But as you saw, the judge decided to take Kim Potter in that day, which is a very common thing that you see. Once a person is found guilty, they usually are taken in and waiting until they're sentencing. So Kim Potter did have a chance to be free and out and about until sentencing, but the judge did take her in, and now the next step would be sentencing in February. Yeah, they went back and forth on several dates. I think they landed on February 18th for that sen sentencing, though. Uh, but you bring up a good point. She has been taken into custody without bail. Uh, that means she's not going to have a Christmas with her family, a final Christmas, uh, and she's going to be taken into prison. She was ushered off in, in the courtroom uh, with handcuffs. So what literally does today and tomorrow look like for Kim Potter celebrating Christmas? I mean, basically, she's going to be in a jail cell celebrating Christmas for until February. Mm. She will probably not see the light of day until she gets out of prison. So mm. once the judge says, I'm going to revoke your bond and you can't walk around and you can't be free anymore, 
is, is you saw the sheriffs come, they handcuff you, she will be booked, she'll be ushered off this afternoon to a jail cell, and she will be spending Christmas Day in the jail cell. So ultimately, if she was found not guilty, she would have been free. She could have gone home and spent Christmas with her family. But because the jury found her guilty, the judge revoked her bond. And now she has only other chance that she has, unless the lawyers file some sort of motion to get her out or file a motion for a new trial. But that's not likely. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve. Christmas is on Saturday. So she will probably be in there until sentencing and until she files an appeal for a new trial or get this verdict overturned if this verdict is overturned if it's not overturned on in february 18th we will find out what kim potter will get because the prosecution is going to ask for the maximum of 15 or more years and the defense attorney of course is going to ask for the least amount of time they can and ultimately after hearing the defense argue after hearing family members talk the judge makes the ultimate decision on how much time Kim Potter will serve in prison. I mean, how likely do you think it is for Kim Potter to receive less? It's going to be up to the defense attorneys to argue, I mean, pretty much their hearts out if they want to see their client, Kim Potter, to receive a smaller sentence. Ultimately, they're going to have to argue the fact that she has uh, hardly anything on her record as a police officer that she's been doing this for over 20 years she's a training officer so they have to make all these arguments bring in family and friends to show the judge and convince the judge that hey even though the juror found her guilty of two counts of all the counts that you still should show leniency and show mercy on her and they're going to argue show mercy on kim potter give her the least amount of time of course the prosecution as you heard throughout this trial and even today that they want to give her the maximum sentence and they're going to be bringing what you call aggravating factors facts that should prove to the judge why kim potter should deserve a higher sentence so it'll be a battle between the two lawyers arguing you may even hear from kim potter most likely you will hear from kim potter talk in february 18th asking the judge for mercy. And in the day after the judge hears from Kim Potter, the lawyers speak, any family or friends, or even Dante Wright's family, the judge hears all of this and weighs in the fact of lack of history for Kim Potter and the fact that Dante Wright was murdered and ultimately the judge will come up to the decision. Yeah, which mind you, a lot of those arguments uh, made by the defense of uh, her background and, and uh, who she is as a person, uh, and they're saying that they didn't want her to be taken into custody uh, without bail, well, that was overturned already in this decision. So it should be interesting come February 18th. Ben, what precedent does this set for other police officers who are in similar positions as Kim Potter? This likely won't be the last case uh, similar to what happened. Yes, I'm sure police officers across the world are watching this and seeing, you know, what happened to Kim Potter and seeing that as a guilty verdict. So, of course, some people may not want to be a police officer because if you make a mistake, you might go to prison or you might be charged with something. Some people might still want to become police officers. But at the end of the day, it's up to the 12 jurors to decide. But yes, police officers, other trials might be affected because it does show what can happen to you if you argue that you made a mistake but the jurors don't agree or the prosecutor doesn't agree any police officer who shoots and kills somebody i mean it's a hard job we understand that police officers have a hard job but ultimately it's the, it's the prosecutor's decision whether or not to bring charges and it's the juror's decision whether or not to say guilty or not guilty so this trial for sure and other trials in the past will definitely affect futures of police officers and how whether or not police officers are charged and convicted in, in the, under the court of law. Ben, not to speculate too much, but when you heard uh, the uh, decision coming down, the verdict coming down and, and guilty on all charges, uh, did that come as a surprise to you or was that what you were expecting? I mean, this was a very different case versus some other cases. And we've seen the Derek Chauvin case, the Derek Chauvin case of the killing of George Floyd. You saw the knee on the neck. 
you saw the knee on the neck for over nine minutes. So that was a pretty straightforward case, I think, for most people. And you saw the jurors came back in the Derek Chauvin case of the killing of George Floyd fairly quickly. They deliberated for like less than a day. This case, these jurors have been out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and now Thursday. So these jurors, they were talking about something over the past three and a half days. And they struggled and they struggled. And I would bet that some of these jurors in there, some of them might, might have thought that Kim Potter was not guilty. And maybe their minds were changed. Some of them might have thought she was only guilty of the lesser count, of the culpable negligence count that was only 10 years. But at the end of the day, you saw the judge earlier this week say, jurors, you have to go back. You have to talk it out. You have to. That means the jurors were undecided just a couple of days ago. Something happened in that jury room over the last day or and a half or so to make some jurors change their minds. And now we have a, a verdict of guilty on the first degree manslaughter count, which is 15 years, and the um, guilty on the second degree manslaughter, which is 10 years. So somebody's minds did change because as you heard, even the judge said, go back in the jury room and deliberate. And it's hard, uh, Ben, not to assume that the time period of this right before the holidays didn't make a big difference for these jurors because they weren't going to deliberate tomorrow. Uh, it was going to be pushed back. So what kind of role do you think that played in them coming up with a speedier decision today? Because uh, I've spoken with reporters who have been covering this every single day and uh, they've said, yeah, probably going to come down that Thursday before Christmas Eve. Yes, anytime you have a trial that's coming close to the weekend, and especially a holiday and a major holiday, these 12 jurors have plans. They have holiday plans, they have Christmas plans, they're thinking about their family, they're thinking about buying Christmas gifts. It's just natural. They're human beings, and they did not want to come back next week during the Christmas and New Year's Eve holiday to decide this case. They were like, let's get this done today and let's go home. So yes, uh, verdict right before the holiday, that was going to be expected. I think a lot of people um, knew that. I mean, doing trials myself, you hate to have a trial, especially as a criminal defense attorney, right before a weekend or right before a holiday, because you know those jurors may or may not be you know, thinking about the case. They're thinking about their families and friends. So yes, this definitely did have an effect of the holiday season, but you would only help and trust in the justice system that they did, you know, look at the evidence, they looked at the body camera footage, they heard Kim Potter, they did deliberate for the last three or four days in this case, and you'd only hope that the jurors, you know, all 12 of them were able to come into the decision, not because of the Christmas holiday and the New Year's holiday coming up, because of that's what the decision was, and that's what the facts of the case. All right, Ben, I want to uh, take everyone out to a couple of these different live looks that we have. This is going to be uh, Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison, who is going to be speaking. He spoke directly after the verdict for the George Floyd trial as well. So not sure exactly what the direction of his press conference will be, but we'll be taking that live. And then also right outside of the courthouse, the Hennepin County Courthouse, uh, as the activists and, and members are going to be speaking as well. We've already heard from them that reaction as they all yelled after uh, the first guilty charge was announced for second degree manslaughter and then the second one uh, for first degree slaughter. Ben Taylor, any uh, last thoughts when it comes to this case? Anything else you're going to be watching? I mean, we're going to be watching sentencing. That, that's going to be interesting because this case is a lot different from um, the George Floyd case. And, and the killing of George Floyd by Derek Chauvin. This case was an uh, officer who had, you know, pretty much a stellar record on her, on her, on her history. So this is a very, um, this verdict was a, one of those verdicts that it could have gone either way. It could have gone guilty on all counts, or it could have gone not guilty. So I think a lot of people would have been surprised either way on this case because you saw her testify, you saw her take the stand. So a guilty verdict or a not guilty verdict. I mean, 12 jurors, you never know what the 12 jurors are going to say. Hope other people might have said not guilty. These 12 jurors said guilty, so only time will tell. And February 18th, we'll see what the judge says. And the judge might give Kim Potter a lighter sentence, or the judge might give Kim Potter a heavier sentence, depending on what the judge hears on February 18th for the sentencing.